I would say that I feel the best when I'm playing with other people, in front of people. There's something incredible about that exchange of energy, that subtle exchange between the band and then with the audience. Just the sort of the mystery about that. The mystery of why people like music. The mystery and the unknown of all that is still what inspires me all the time on stage. I remember getting the bass and realizing that you could kind of express yourself melodically in, in really subtle ways while still being present in the song and being a part of the song and serving the song. And I think that was what I always really loved about it was that sort of subtle expression that some of my favorite players were able to do in these really heavy groove situations or in these certain songs. I really did come up heavily influenced by, by punk and post-punk early on, so I think that had a, a real effect on me. Later it was sort of like picking up country rock bass and bass players like Chris Hillman and Chris Etheridge, people like that. I've gone through phases loving many different players. Joe Osborne is really one of the great session basses of all time. Incredible, incredible player. Everything from California Dreamin' to Age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius was actually a bass line that had a real profound effect on me when I was a kid. When I, I heard it in, in a car when I was driving with my parents, the Let the Sun Shine In sequence, that is some of the most free, amazing, off-the-cuff bass playing I've ever like heard in, into the stratosphere. I was really influenced by the sort of like funky white guys like, like Duck Dunn, also the American recording band at Memphis, a uh, bass player named Tommy Cogbill, who played on like Son of a Preacher Man. They were incredible, just the most subtle, just the greatest feel, but the, also the subtle sort of wonderful melody. Yeah, Fender bass, I mean, that really was the reason that rock and roll was created in many ways. Let's face it, I mean, you can imagine the sound of, of a of precision, early precision bass in a, in, a, in a bar when all anyone ever heard was a stand-up bass. What it does, is, I mean, there's enough room to really express yourself. I don't really do stack knob to, too often, but I like just the, the neck pickup and playing with fingers very close to the neck, but, but picking pretty far back, close to the bridge, and, and just rolling the tone pretty far down. But there's just, just enough parameters that you were really able to sort of, to find your sweet spot. I have and have owned many classic Fender basses, and it really, it evokes the same thing there's a voice that's very similar, or just a sensibility and the feel. There are many aspects that are very similar to, to the 65 jazz that I have. It's a classic piece, you know, and there's maybe no need to sort of, you know, go anywhere else. In rock and roll, I think bands are lucky if they're able to stay around seven to ten years. But the depth that you can get into with other musicians with that many shows and with that many years and, and cert with 20 years for me and Jeff and Wilco, there's a, absolutely a sort of second nature. I mean, I've learned really how to play the instrument in the band. So it's this really profound connection that you have with, with people that many people really don't get to experience. And that sort of interplay that you get with an ensemble after that many years is, you know, I feel really lucky to be able to be a part of it, especially with talented players I play with. It's really it's very much beyond words. I'm John Stewart and I play bass for the band Wilco. This is my American standard. Thank you.